Welcome back guys, in today's video we're going to be tackling my new motor build, part 1. Let's get right to it. We make the strings louder. So I want to address this right away because I know it will get asked. No, this current motor did not blow up. I didn't get any ringland failure, no rod knocks, heads didn't lift. I simply just want to build an autocross setup. Therefore, I think I'm going to be going with a closed deck motor. So the Cicada's outside are actually incredibly loud. I hope you can all hear my audio just fine. I'm going to do my best to close the garage door whenever I need to. That way you all can hear me a little bit better. Through the course of this video, I'm just gonna walk you through some of the steps that I have taken to do some of my motor builds in the past. You can take the advice uh, or you can leave it. It's up to you guys. This will be kind of an informative slash pro tip video. And then the next video will start, um, we'll start tearing down the motor. One of the first steps that I always take care of is I wash the car from top to bottom. This ensures that bug guts, road tar, etc. aren't sitting on the paint for however many months the car is down for. As we all know, those kinds of things can eat into the clear coat. Be sure to do a good job when washing. You don't want to skimp or skip out on anything. Alright, so as you can tell, the car is now completely clean. I'm going to move on to the very next step, and that involves cleaning your entire work area. That involves sweeping out the entire garage. You don't want to be laying on any uh, dirty surface when you're underneath the car, wrenching on some bolts, as well as cleaning off the top of my toolbox. I want that to be completely clean in case I need to set any tools or uh, parts up there to work on. So we've got the garage all cleaned up, toolbox is cleaned as well. Looks like it's about to rain, so it's time to move in the car. So next we're going to cut up a piece of cardboard to lay down in the rear of the car, over the rear seats, and partially in the trunk. That way we have an area to put all of the parts and they won't get in the way of us while we're working. I know some cars don't actually allow you to fold down the rear seats. Eagles! <clears throat> Sorry about that, I had a tickle in my throat. But that's what we're gonna be taking care of next. Looks like I got the car in the garage just in the nick of time. Just started pouring. If you're happy with the position of your car in your garage, now's a good time to jack it up and put it on some jack stands. Now 
Now that the car is up in the air, you can do one of two things. You can pull the engine like normal, or in my case, I'm gonna run the engine for a little while until the oil is warm, and I'm going to pour it into this Blackstone used oil analysis kit. So as I said, I would show you what's all included with the Blackstone oil analysis kit. Comes with a container to collect your used oil into. as well as some paperwork to fill out, some windshield sticker reminders for your next oil change, and then a bag to place the used oil container into, just in case it does leak. Seal that all up, and you're gonna drop it into this. There is actually some absorbent material in there in case any used oil spills out. That goes on in there, as well as the paperwork. You cap it off, and there is a barcode down here at the very bottom, and that's what you're gonna to use to ship it out via USPS. I'm gonna show you guys just how easy it is to take an oil sample for Blackstone. I've actually got a Fumoto oil drain valve on my oil pan, so it's gonna probably be a lot easier for me. The only other thing I'm going to take care of from here is tape down the entire fenders. That way when I'm leaning against the car, I don't scratch the paint. Be sure to join me for part two of this series when I get to actually yank out the motor. So thank you all again for watching. Be sure to like, comment, share, and subscribe. It really is appreciated. And we'll see you in the next video, guys. Peace.